I started getting an inordinate number of referrals of students, uh, a lot of honor students, eighth graders mostly, who were self-mutilating. They were cutting themselves with sharp objects and they were burning themselves with cigarettes. My phone never stopped. And I didn't know why, I asked the kids and all they kept saying was, we can't take the pressure, it's too much. I also started getting a lot of elementary school students referred to me. They were refusing to go to school. They said they were, felt stupid and that school was too hard. They were throwing tantrums, begging to stay home and upset to the point of vomiting. I was hearing from parents about kids bringing home homework they couldn't help them with. They, I was alarmed to hear that in some cases there were no textbooks for the parents to look at and they had no idea what their children were learning. The teachers were reporting a staggering level of anxiety and depression and that was when I first heard the term common core and learned about the standards that we now say set the bar so high anyone can walk right under it. Everyone was talking about the tests, the tests. As the school year progressed and the tests loomed, my patients were increasing their self-mutilating behaviors. They were complaining of insomnia, panic attacks, loss of appetite, depressed mood, and in one case, suicidal thoughts that resulted in a two-week hospital stay for an adolescent. We can't regulate biology. Young children cannot engage in the type of critical thinking that the Common Core calls for. That would require a fully developed prefrontal cortex, a part of the brain that is not fully functional until adulthood. The prefrontal cortex is responsible for critical thinking, rational decision making, and abstract thought, all things that the Common Core requires prematurely. We give children pre-assessments, tell them to succeed, and then give them tests on material they haven't learned and tell them it's okay to fail. They cannot resolve that mixed message. Last spring, a six-year-old encountered a multiplication sign on the NWEA first grade math exam and asked the teacher what it was. The teacher was not allowed to help him and told him to just do his best. From that point on, the student's test performance went downhill. He couldn't shake off the unfamiliar symbol and couldn't believe his teacher wouldn't help him. The Common Core requires children to read informational texts that are owned by a handful of corporations. They don't have a filter to distinguish good information from bad. So whatever you put in front of them, they take that as God. Ask them to write critically using emotionally charged language to persuade instead of inform. They don't have that functional prefrontal cortex. So they tap into their limbic system, which is the part of the brain that involves basic human emotions, anger and fear being the foremost. So when we ask them to use emotionally charged language, we're actually asking them to fuel their language with fear and anger and aggression. They cannot temper this judgment. They don't have the, the, the ability to do that. So we teach to the test, which I think doesn't really measure learning. I think the tests measure endurance and resilience. Only a child who can sit still for 90 minutes, come back the next day and do it again, and the next day again can succeed. I'm going to introduce you to a, a couple, I'm almost done, I'm going to introduce you to just a couple of, of student stories, okay? A couple of the faces of the Common Core. We have an entire third grade class that spent the entire day sobbing after one testing session. A second grader who witnessed this is now in third grade and won't go to school. She's being evaluated, a seven-year-old being evaluated for psychotropic medication just to get her to go to school. A six-year-old who came home crying because in September, in, in the first grade, she didn't know what a vertex was. Two eight-year-olds opted out of the ELA exam and were publicly denied cookies because the teacher gave them to the class but wouldn't give them to them. And that teacher, who under duress, felt obligated to do such a thing. A sixth grader who once aspired to be a writer but now won't do it because we do it all day long, even in math and a mother who has to leave work early because her son is hysterical over his math homework, and his CPA grandfather who's babysitting for him can't even help him do it. And countless other kids who are refusing to go to school feel stupid and now are completely turned off to education. I will conclude with this one thought. Our country became a superpower on the backs of men and women who learned in one run room schoolhouses. This isn't rocket science, it doesn't take a great deal of technology or corporate or government involvement to, to help our children to succeed.
We need to rethink the Common Core and the associated high-stakes testing and get back to the business of educating our children in a safe, healthy, and productive manner. Thank you. A couple Thank you. quick final things to say. In the, as a 20-year college professor who's taught high school, you know this. You're the audience who knows this. For about 40 years now, under the guise of teaching your kids how to read and write, professors, teachers, teachers' unions have been sneaking in all sorts of liberal garbage. The difference between that and this now is, is that where the f first emphasis used to be on teaching them reading, writing, and math, and then bringing in the indoctrination, here's your big switch now. The first thing is the indoctrination, and they don't really care about the other stuff. That's the big flip. That's why Common Core is such a big deal, and it is a huge deal. I want to say, um, if you want any of this information, go to Freedom Project.